going on everyone? K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Bitcoin did have a beautiful, beautiful pump from the moment of breakout. You can see right here though, we are seeing a very... Uh, large red volume candle right now you can see the candle is a little bit indecisive and I did post this over on Twitter this morning you know this is called a Darth Maul wick these are why it's very very not suggested for you to trade on days when data comes out you know CPI data or Powell speech because you get these big wicks that go to the upside they go to the downside and people with very high leverage can actually end up getting liquidated so what exactly happened this morning well we had the CPI data if you were following me over on Twitter I had tweeted this so make sure you guys get subscribed or go follow me on Twitter at the crypto zombie because you know as soon as it came out we knew that it was pretty much neutral they were anticipating 6.5 percent now you can see JP Morgan was saying that they would they would assume that stocks would go up 1.5 to 2. Right now, ultimately, the stock market is actually um, kind of neutral. It's pretty much almost where it opened. It did have this big wick to the downside. So will the stock market actually end up pushing to the top of this channel? Well, that's kind of what I was talking about. And this was why I put the video out. If you did watch my video from last night, you know, I made this uh, video literally last night. It was, it was like 930 at night and I put this out. And the reason is because I just wanted to have a bit of caution for the simple fact that we did have five consecutive days of Bitcoin pumping. And also there were so many people that were anticipating, you know, that the S&P was ultimately going to hit this level again. And you can see right here, what did it end up doing? It ended up stalling at this previous, um, support resistance and it never actually made it up to that level. So I do want to just talk about what we should expect moving forward. Guys, we had a very nice pump on Bitcoin. There might be a little period of cool off. So I do want to talk about that. And I also want to discuss the fact that we actually had a new report that came out from Genesis Global Trading. We know the situation that they're going through right now with Gemini and Digital Currency Group. Well, unfortunately, I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news. It might be worse than we had anticipated. So if this all sounds good to you, not the bad news, but everything that's been going on, make sure you drop a like. Everyone that you know was able to make profits, people were actually sending me messages saying thank you. They got into the trade. They actually made profits. So congratulations, guys, if you did you know, take the trade. Um, so let's dive in. Let's have a look. And of course, turn on the bell notification so you guys get the notifications. Last night, I did a video very late. Some people didn't see it. Some people didn't get that notification. So make sure you turn on the bell, right? So Obviously, we got that CPI data. We did see stocks uh, start to pull down. Now, again, I talked about the significance of this level, and this was a very important level right here. We had three, uh, th there had one, two supports, then we had resistance, resistance, and look at this, guys. We did pump through it, but we fell down, right? And that level was $18,134. Now, if we come over here, we could see that it was a bit of a zone, right? Because you can kind of take the upper uh, you know, these candle closes that we had back here, very weak, but basically we said anywhere between 18,160 all the way up to about 18,450 was our area to look to potentially take profit, right? And there is that possibility that we come down here and we retest somewhere on this upward sloping trend. Now, this is pretty much, you know, arbitrary. It kind of depends on where we land. So if you want to look at the official level uh, to pay attention to, uh, oh, sorry, guys. The official level would actually be probably right around 17,664. Uh, the reason for that is because, um, let me just get rid of this. The reason for that is because you can see, you know, we had this little wick right here. We also had this touch on this big candle that was the fake out. We had that touch right there. So there is a little bit of interest potentially around the $17,664 level. And you can kind of see if we come back to this upwards trend, it also you know, kind of supports, you know, right here, if we drop today, that's around 17,565. And, you know, a couple days later, 17,6. So basically between 17,5 and 17,6 is where we're looking to have that support. Now, if we do break through this area, you know, we have a little bit of support right here at around 16.8, but we'll probably come back to the heart line again. But just be cautious, guys. Um, you know, if the situation doesn't turn out as great for the stocks, if the stocks start to really sell off at these levels, then we could see Bitcoin you know, unfortunately have a second fake out like we did here and enter back into this bear flag. And then if that is the case, then we may see something like this. Now, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I don't want to freak anyone out, but this is why you have to take profits when profits are on the table. And you can see right here, you know, you could check the dates right here. This was literally last night. 
Um, it was like 11 o'clock or something like that. And I did take some cells and I took them, you know, between 18 to 15 and 18 to 17, you know, um, obviously I still have a massive hodl position. Clearly that's just my swing trade position, but you know, somebody actually reached out to me last night in the comments and I was asking about taking profits and you know, I mean, if you're up, uh, yeah, you know, sell half, keep half, or, you know, at least get back your initial margin if you're, if you're going long or short, right? You always want to preserve that capital. And, you know, one of the biggest ways that I got burned, uh, especially when I first started trading, was not because I, well, obviously when I first started, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but besides getting lucky, once I learned what I was doing, it was almost like that cockiness, that ego, right? You win like nine trades, 10 trades in a row, and you just feel like you're on top of the world. And you're just like, I'm not going to set a stop loss. I'm going all in with all my profits. And then you get, you know, one of these crazy, uh, you know, one of these crazy Darth Maul wicks, right? And then what happens? You got nothing left, right? So always remember to secure those profits. Very, very, very important, guys. So having a look, though, this is what we're seeing right here. Uh, we have this 21 exponential, which is very important. We've gone over this on the weekly, and we have this 300 uh, simple moving average coming up here. Now you can see that we've kind of ha held this simple you know, as support, and look what happened right here. Look at this, perfect resistance. And again, I mean, you, you can't even make this up, guys. Zoom in on that. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, that's like... Boom, right? That is absolute, absolute resistance right there. So basically what I'm looking at is that we want to try to have this exponential curve up, right? We don't, we don't want to have these two touch because, you know, if we have this, for example, fall down below this, that's going to be basically a death cross for, for Bitcoin. And that's not going to be good. And we will continue to the downside, you know, as we have, right? So that's something that I am paying attention to. Um, like I said, there might be some short term consolidation, but I do think that it, it basically, in a nutshell, Bitcoin has to basically break above this level, which currently is sitting at 19,172. But do understand that this comes down over time, right? So the same way that, you know, we have this major, 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 major downsloping trend, we also have this moving average that's coming down with us as well. So at some point, we're going to run into it, right? Um, we're either going to pump through it, we're going to get rejected, or we're just going to slowly, slowly move into it, right? So we will monitor that. Um, and this is just for somebody, again, in the comments yesterday asked me to look at the uh, EMA ribbon on the daily. So as far as the EMA ribbon on the daily is concerned, we still have, you know, the red on top, which you know, you want to see the ribbon flip. You want to see yellow on top, right? Remember I told you it's like you want to see the twist. So as an example right here, um, you can see where right right here, the uh, the ribbon twisted, right? We had the top moving below the bottom and the bottom moving above the top. So that's bearish. We haven't seen that yet on the daily. So people were asking about that. You know, we still have not seen that at all. And switching to the four hour, I mean, technically we have seen it on the four hour, but the four hour is such a low time frame, you know, within four hours, literally something could change. So, you know, sure, if you're trading on the lower time frame, that that was a great indicator right there. As soon as we had that flip, um, you know, kudos, that was a great, actually great indication to take the trade. But realistically, uh, you know, longer term, it doesn't really give us enough data. So that being said, guys, if you do want to learn how to trade, number one, get subscribed to the channel. Number two, turn on bell notifications. And number three, make sure that you watch the video popping above or check out the tutorial in the description below. There's $56,000 in bonuses. But honestly, if you guys don't care about that from an educational perspective, I highly recommend you guys should watch it. And remember, everything on the Crypto Zombie channel is absolutely free. And if you ever see scammers that are acting like me saying courses, pay me, send me stuff. No, that's not me, guys. I don't ask for money ever on this channel. I just want to see you guys succeed. So let's talk about what happened this morning. So 8.30 a.m. Eastern time, we had the U.S. Labor Department announcing the CPI numbers. Now, the estimation was 6.5%. We also got 6.5% year over year. So people were like, oh, this is good. This is what we were expecting. Well, it is good, but we were pricing it in. The markets were anticipating 6.5%. So when we actually got what we were expecting to get, it was kind of a non-event, right? It kind of like balanced it out as neutral. And now it's sort of like, well, what's the next big thing? You know, is it Powell coming out and speaking? You know, is, is there something else going to come out? Because we already rallied into that and we got what we expected. You see what I'm trying to say? So the actual figures announced were precisely the same as the year over year of 6.5 for general CPI and 5.7 uh, rise in CPI core, excluding food and energy. But keep in mind, 
Keep in mind, even though inflation is coming down, both of these are still the highest December jumps in over 40 years, right? So just remember that even though you're seeing inflation come down, understand that these numbers are still representations of an increase, right? So even though, yes, we're down 3%, we're still technically going up six and a half percent. You see what I'm trying to say? So, you know, this doesn't signal to me that the Fed is looking to potentially pivot anytime soon. Of course, they may start to slow down a little bit, but ultimately, I still think 2023 is going to be a bit of a turbulent year. It's going to be rough for me, honestly, as a content creator, Um, you know, because it's, I, I, you know, we're going to have our rallies but I think for the most part, I think it's going to be a big sideways movement. I think, you know, we could rally up to 30 only to pull back down to 15, 17. You know, we, we could still have that flash crash down to, you know, 13, 8 or 12 or something. But for the most part, the way that I'm seeing 2023 is a giant opportunity for accumulation. That's what I'm seeing personally. I'm not seeing a crazy bull run. I'm not seeing any more crazy dumpage. You know, even if we do have a quick wick, I'm seeing more of a sideways consolidation. Actually, just to kind of show you, you know, I'm seeing more of, you know, something like, uh, you know, down here, like where we had this, like this, I still have my drawing from yesterday, you know, sideways like this, even this, I mean, look at this guys. So, you know, basically, um, you know, from May of 2019, you know, essentially all the way until October of 2020, you know, I mean, if we just draw a, you know, a simple line right here, I mean, look at the, the sideways consolidate. I mean, it depends on really where you want to draw your line a little bit. And of course I have it on super, super dark. So, cause so you guys can't see, hold on, let me make it a little bright. There we go. And there we go. So, you know, I mean, look at this range that we were basically in and you can even say it was a little lower actually. Well, I don't really count the COVID crash because that was a bit of a black swan, right? Um, this is very arbitrary by the way, guys. But I mean, look at this for the most part, you know, with the exception of this little area right here, this area right here, this area right here, we pretty much just rallied up and came back down, rallied up and came back down, rallied up, and then we started to move, right? So it was pretty damn boring, really, you know, between that area. But, you know, this area right here, you know, represented a massive, massive opportunity for accumulation. So anyone buying Bitcoin between $7,000 and $11,000, well, look what ended up happening. You know, from that point to the top, 565%, or if you got in at the bottom of the range, that was about 924%. If you got in at the average of the range, you know, that was roughly around 743%. So, you know, this could be the accumulation range that we're looking at right now. So ultimately, guys, let's talk about some good news and then let's, well, actually, this isn't good news. <laughs> This is actually not good news. I did have some good news at the end, but I just wanted to go over really quick. So uh, cryptocurrency broker Genesis Global Trading allegedly owes its creditors more than $3 billion, according to a report from the Financial Times that literally came out today. According to people familiar with the matter, digital currencies venture arm has more than 200 crypto related projects, such as exchanges, banks and custodians in at least 35 countries with a total valuation around 500 million. Genesis reportedly hired investment bank Moelis to explore strategic alternatives, although people familiar with the matter said there was little capital infusion interest. So again, guys, just a warning, there may be sort of one more of these events. Now, it's not going to be a full on black swan, which is why, you know, every time we have something happen in crypto, you're seeing less and less and less of a dump, right? It's because, you know, number one, we're becoming desensitized. And number two, we're kind of expecting it. But I just want you guys to understand that this is also something that could hold back the space, right? For, for a little bit longer. If these guys go under, how does that affect digital currency group? That means, you know, maybe the Gemini earn people are never going to get their money back, right? And, you know, we still have the FTX situation going on. So there's a lot to still clean out in the space. But I do believe that 2023, as I said right here, you know, could be, uh, you know, a really good opportunity to accumulate within this range. And then, you know, boom. So, you know, we could have something you know, what are, we, what are we starting here? Maybe we're starting a range like this, right? Something like this, right? And we just sort of bounce between 15 and 25. And, you know, of course we have our little fake outs to the top, you know, we have our little fake outs to the bottom, but it could be something again, like we had back here where you just sort of accumulate, you know, for about a year, a year and a half. And, you know, then you start to curve and then, you know, you get that uptick again. And that's actually very healthy for markets. And I understand it's boring. The idea of sitting through an entire sideways year, right? But I'll tell you what, guys, the year will go faster than you think. 
time, especially as I get older, it just keeps going faster and faster and faster. And before you know it, guys, we'll have the Bitcoin having, it'll be 2025 and we'll have our 100,000, 150, 200, $250,000 Bitcoin. There's no doubt in my mind it is coming uh, right now. We just got to get through a little bit of a turbulent situation. So let me end on a good note. This is the good note. This is the news that was the positive news. So El Salvador has taken a step forward by passing its digital securities bill. This will allow it to issue Bitcoin bonds. They also, uh, not in this article, but they also deemed everything else as a security besides Bitcoin. So they're, they're all in on Bitcoin. The digital securities bill will establish the legal order that grants legal certainty to transfer operations with any title of digital assets that are used in the assistance of public offerings carried out in El Salvador. Among other actions, the bill asks for creation of a national digital assets commission that will serve as a crypto regulation body and promoter of the market. Most interestingly, the bill will create a Bitcoin fund administration agency. This will focus on the administration safeguarding and investment of funds from public offerings of digital assets carried out by the Salvadorian state and the return that come from said offers. Now, you may be saying like, who cares about El Salvador? But I just have to remind you guys that, well, maybe some of you weren't around, but in 2017 and 2018, we were literally talking about, you know, one of these days, a big company is going to buy Bitcoin and they're going to put it on their balance sheet. And, you know, a country is going to adopt Bitcoin as a Bitcoin standard. And it was like a pie in the sky dream and nobody believed it. You know, fast forward to now. And we're like taking for granted, basically, that you have MicroStrategy and Tesla and these big billionaires who used to say no, you know, now getting involved, Druckenmiller, right, and these other guys. And we have a country literally that has adopted Bitcoin. So slowly and then suddenly, right? Just remember, guys, you know, if you look historically, you know, you look at the S curve of adoption, you look at the way that, you know, the light bulb, the automobile, the internet, email, all this different stuff, you know, the way that it was kind of shunned when it first came out. And then it slowly becomes adopted over time. So, you know, if you look at the S curve, right, it starts out very slow and then it goes really, 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 really fast. And then it kind of curves back out again. Right. I believe we're at that slope of the bottom of the S curve. And I think in the next five to 10 years, the Lindy effect, ultimately, you know, in other words, if, you know, something that's been around for 10 years is likely to be around for another 10 years. And it usually accelerates within that time. Just Google the Lindy effect. I'm, I'm, I'm oversimplifying it. But ultimately, I'm feeling very, very bullish on Bitcoin. And I'm super, super excited to see what it can do in the next 15 years, right? So that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you get subscribed. Congratulations if you took the trade. Be safe out there. You know, we have had five straight days of green candles. There may be a little consolidation. Um, and obviously, we are still dealing with the, the Genesis issue, and that could put some pressure on the markets, especially if DCG does have to liquidate some of their holdings, right? So let's be realistic about things. But you guys are awesome. I hope you're DCAing. I hope you're, you know, collecting as much, you know, BTC as you can. Um, not financial advice, but you guys know where I stand on that. So that is it for me. Thank you so much for coming back to the channel. You guys rock. And of course, if you do want to learn how to trade, easiest thing you could possibly do is just subscribe to the channel. You know, just follow every day. That's the best way. Just, just watch these videos. You'll learn. You'll see the strategies. You'll understand how I come up with these, you know, different trade opportunities. And also make sure that you watch this video popping up right here, right now. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.